year, a large contingent of teachers has turned out at every school board meeting. They say that they're underpaid and barely getting any pay increases in recent years. In fact, in the four-year period from January 1st, 2012 to December 31st, 2015, the cumulative inflation rate has been a little less than 5%. When you look at the total wages paid by the school district to all its employees in 2012, compared to four years later, 2015, our total wages have increased about 3%, which is definitely below the rate of inflation. It's not a question of whether or not our teachers deserve more money, it's that we as a community don't have the money to pay them. Our real estate assessments are lower than they've been 15 years ago, continually going down. The school district is not raising taxes again this year, and because of lower assessments, we'll be generating about $400,000 less in revenues than we did last year. And Pottstown continues to have more assessment appeals than any other municipality in Montgomery County. But let's look at borough government. From 2012 to 2015, borough employees were collectively paid about 29% more based on their total W-2 wages than they were in 2012, just four years earlier. And this is a time when the cumulative inflation rate was less than 5%. In fact, the community paid about $2 million more just in wages for borough employees providing essentially the same services as they were doing in 2012. So as a 43-year resident and taxpayer in Pottstown, I would suggest that we be done with wage increases for borough employees for a long time to come. Regarding the school district, speaking as just one board member of nine, if we want to give teachers pay raises, we're going to have to figure out how to be more efficient because this community cannot afford to spend any more tax dollars than it does now. Thank you for your consideration. I apologize, the first name I can't read, last name is Mutter. Worked. I was, thought I was going to hear what you were saying about the crossing guard situation before I spoke, so I'm just going to throw out a couple of concerns I have about the crossing guard situation. I am presently not, I'm Vicki Mutter, 58 year resident of Pottstown, and one of the underpaid employees from Pottstown Middle School. I um, am here just out of concern for crossing guards, not knowing that this is happening at all. I did, that's my first question. Do they know this is happening at all? The money that's going to be saved, is it going to be saved because their pay is going to be cut? Second question. And um, the faces, are they gonna still be local faces that we see on the corners? Because I stand out front as a duty at the middle school and there are three faces that are there almost every single day. They don't change, they're pretty regular. Once a policeman does fill in for him, my, my question or what I found out to be true is they, they are there on their duty, the pay does not get picked up as a police pay. They just fill in for the half hour or so that they're there. They're paid as their policeman wage. They're not double dipping as a crossing guard because there was something said in the paper that they would save monies because they're not using the cross of the policeman to cover corners. I just wanted to come and listen while you're cutting crossing guards. That's the only reason why I'm here. Thank you. Ron Williams. Ron Williams, 245 Walnut Street, Pottstown. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, we, our powwow uh, went off in, in, in early May. Um, you know, thank you to the council for supporting and, and, and endorsing where we went. It was a great kickoff. Uh, you know, weather began, people showed up, and, uh, and uh, you know, just generally thank you. <laughs> you just stole Ron's <laughs> <the> heart. <laughs> yeah. Man he gets off his seat, seat he has walking. possessions. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that was mentioned at the committee with the whole meeting while I wasn't here. And this is just a reminder that the Pottstown Historical Society has a free uh, event on uh, Thursday between 6 and 8 for the historic walking tour of 
East High Street between Hanover up to Manitani and then back down again. It's of no cost to the borough. A lot of volunteers just think it's a very cool part of the history of Pottstown. And um, we'll be having a sort of as a special ending this year. Matt Green has arranged for an open house at the Security Trust building to have a view from the upper floors for a higher view of the Pottstown streets than you normally might get. So come on out Thursday night. It might be drizzly, but just wear your raincoat. And it happens to be the same night as the farmer's market. So we're hoping that the two events will complement each other. Mm -hmm. And the walking tour has historically um, uh, um, um, enticed visitors from Berks County and Chester County. So we think it'll be a fun <coughs> <event>. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. from Kanita is not going to be here and I saw Debbie so we thought we would definitely keep the word out in the community about the Pottstown farm. Deb was nice enough to mention too that uh, all this is going to be dovetailing this Thursday with the historical walking tour as well as an open house at the building that contains the brick house. What is it? Security Trust. Um, they're going to have an open house of their new space uh, as well as it's a historical building, so people can come out, they can buy from the farm, they can see the old and the new in Pottstown. Um, I also, if I just have a minute, <laughs> wanted to talk about Halloween. I, I wrote that down as well. Um, the last two years, myself and Marie Haig have been helping on the committee with the Halloween extravaganza, bringing events together, and we're going to be doing that again this year. So. I'm just putting that out in the ethos right now that um, in light of the terrible things that have happened with the 4th of July that we really want to make sure the Halloween parade goes off without a hitch and I'm, I'm willing to, the farm and uh, anybody who can help would like to help with fundraising for the Halloween parade, making sure that all the civic organizations that are involved are on track. So. Um, anybody can help me with connections for that. I'm you know, looking to make sure that comes off as a nice event for the town, uh, combining with Parks and Rec and all the other events that are, are done. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I haven't taken Toastmasters yet. It's something that's always been on my list. <laughs> so, I just want to say real quick. <laughs> no, I'm just going to say that um, Farmer's Market is every Thursday from 4 to 8. And come on down. Um, we have local farmers that have um, fruits and vegetables. I know more stuff will be coming in by the end of June. Um, as the crops grow. And then there's a lot of great artisans down there too. Um, last week we had a pet event, which was awesome. We had a lot of people and some great pets out there. So periodically um, we'll have a, a calendar out that we'll have different events each month, like special events. So I guess come on down. Yeah, even if it's drizzly, like Deb said, I hope that people come out and support the farmers. And if any of you I mean, just share on social media, just share about this farmer's market. We need to keep getting the word out that it's every week. It's been successful thus far, but we need to keep it going until October. So just keep spreading the word. That's all. Thanks. Thank you. That's the extent of Susan's comments. <laughs>